morning, everybody. Welcome to today's 1 million by 1 million online rendezvous. 1M by 1M, as you know, is the first and only global virtual accelerator for startups. Our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue. And in support of that mission, we communicate with our community through a lot of different touch points. This being one of them, we are currently live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. We also do online mentoring sessions. These are free and they happen once a week and entrepreneurs from all over the world connect into those. I'll spend some time at the end of the session discussing how to use those roundtables. And, uh, and of course, we have all kinds of uh, content, touch points, podcast, etc., blog, podcast, and uh, a lot of publishing on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter as well. So follow us in any of those channels and uh, we will get acquainted. In the session today, as I've done in the prior sessions uh, on LinkedIn Live or Facebook Live and Twitter Live, is that I've been answering questions, basically. So I pick up questions that we're getting elsewhere. Uh, Quora is a place where we get a lot of questions, and I uh, often pick up questions from Quora or even from here. Um, so last time, actually, when we were doing this session, I uh, got a bunch of questions on freemium. So I thought uh, today's session, I would start with freemium related questions. Um, so let's go to the first question. The question is, what are the best examples of companies that have succeeded using the freemium business model? Well, um, some I'll give you some names of companies like Dropbox has done the freemium model, Box has done the freemium model, and, and many others. But more importantly, I want to give you some framework of how to think about freemium pricing. The issue that you need to think about very carefully is whether you want to do freemium or free trial. If you're selling a product that has a natural free trial, for example, X units of whatever are free for free, or you know, Y months of whatever for free, then your logic applies great. But if you look at the thousands of companies out there that have a product out there for free and then no real thought through path to monetization, I think freemium is not the solution. Instagram is one of the drivers of this kind of ideas entering the marketplace. Facebook could afford to do Instagram and now they're monetizing heavily on advertising. So if you are trying to do something for free and if you can monetize with advertising and you can get to, you have a path, viral path to get to millions of users, that's okay. Whether it's Instagram or WhatsApp, um, these are free. They're not freemium, they're free. Facebook is free. And that's an advertising monetized model. That's not freemium. Freemium is when you give something for free to begin with and then either to get additional features or to get additional units or to get additional time, you start charging. That's freemium. So don't confuse free advertising monetized model versus freemium where you do need to monetize the product itself. But I still think that free trial is the best way to think about this. Examples like SurveyMonkey, EchoSign, these fit the free trial model very well. You know, Zoho has a free trial and then it starts charging as you need more accounts. And entire categories of SaaS products that have done a very good tiered pricing model where you start with like a very low tier entry point to test the product and then you start paying as you consume more of the product. That's the way to think about Premium. Okay, so the, the related question that I will answer as well 
is what businesses lend themselves best to a freemium pricing model and why. So I reinforce the point, the best kind are those that have metered pricing. You can try something, get a taste of it, but you need to pay to do more. Email marketing is a very good example. Send emails to 100 contacts for free, but to send to 1,000, you need to pay. Okay. And then I have another freemium question. The question is, is freemium a stable economic model? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Unless you have a sugar daddy or you're a serial entrepreneur with lots of savings to fund the business with, freemium is very difficult to sustain. Conversion rate for freemium from free to premium, free to paid, tends to be one to 2%. If that, if you can get to 4% conversion on freemium, you are knocking the ball out of the park. So acquiring traffic is very expensive, very time consuming and conversion from free to paid is extremely challenging. So I think you should start monetizing fast without having to sustain a humongous free rider contingent because freemium, draw, freemium attracts free riders, people who never pay anything. So, and that, you know, it still consumes support, it still consumes resources and um, having to sustain large numbers of free users providing support and everything and not be able to monetize them is, a, is not a particularly sustainable, stable business model. Okay, so those were my three uh, freemium related questions that started coming up in last uh, session, last Tuesday's session. And I wanted to address the topic in a bit of detail. Um, I'm going to switch topics and go to a topic that is um, just starting to be discussed more openly, which is the mental health of founders. Um, entrepreneurship is a very, very difficult journey. And um, people have no, not really discussed openly how mentally, emotionally, psychologically challenging the process is. So the question that I'm going to answer is how do founders cope with anxiety and fear? Startups are extremely difficult. So if you venture into this world, please assume that these challenges will come no matter what. You will feel anxious. There will be moments of fear, self-doubt, frustration. I will share a few tools from my own experience, both as an entrepreneur, as well as from running the One Million by One Million Global Accelerator, where we nurture and mentor numerous entrepreneurs. First, I suggest you create a set of clear goals that you can follow step by step. This must include small milestones, small action items, and hence opportunities to win small victories on a daily, weekly basis. This keeps you going with a positive energy and a sense that you are making progress. Second, getting feed feedback is very helpful. Whether it is from people in your trusted network or from more formal mentors, you need to get feedback, including course correction if something isn't working. The small steps I discussed, if you can measure them, the metrics will give you some feedback on whether you are on the right track. I constantly run experiments with my team and have created a learning organization. If some experiments fail, we're not bothered as long as some succeed and we're moving forward as a whole. Third, you must leverage your strengths on a regular basis. This is how you excel. Excellence creates enjoyment. It creates joy. It also dials down frustration. Fourth, you must remain focused, aware, present in your journey. If 
what you're doing doesn't engage you at a somewhat supernatural level, you're probably not very passionate about your mission. It will be hard to sustain. Fifth, focus also means keeping distractions to a minimum, saying no to random opportunities that don't have strategic alignment. This also gives you a sense of control. Sixth, and this one is very hard, is to check the fear of failure. Seventh, if you can really immerse yourself in your mission and in what you're doing, self-consciousness dissolves. This is a state of flow that makes unexpected things happen. Very helpful. It also dissolves the sense of time. All of the above creates an enjoyable mental state rather than a frustrated mental state. As for sharing these feelings with other entrepreneurs, I would suggest being selective in whom you share with. Don't do it broadly, but have a select few structured outlets, whether it's friends, family, colleagues who can take it. Not everyone can or would be willing to listen and give you the support that you are looking for. So that's a, uh, you know, that's a rather comprehensive answer to the fear and anxiety question. The next question I'm going to go to is what are some self-study resources for learning to build a startup? I will point you first and foremost to the 1 million by 1 million basic program, which is our curriculum only program. If you go to our website, go to 1 by 1 and basic, we explain very clearly. Um, see, 1 million by 1 million premium is something that you can certainly join right away. It is an annual commitment, one year commitment, um, and it's an intense commitment. And you don't really get it enough unless you make that commitment and follow through on that commitment. So if you're not quite ready for the one year long intense mentoring of one and by one and premium, one and by one and basic offers access to the curriculum and it costs just $99 a month. So use the curriculum to quickly plug your knowledge gaps by self-learning, whether you need to understand better positioning, customer acquisition, team building, or financing. And uh, I think that's probably one of the best ways to self-study. Self there is the one and by one and self-assessment on our website. That's also something that you can use to prioritize which modules you need to learn. Get fresh ideas, refine your strategy, course correct as you go through the video lectures, interviews, and case studies. And it's all based on experiences of over a thousand successful entrepreneurs. So you can pick your own pace of learning, one month, several months. The core curriculum takes about 50 hours to get through. You have access to over 500 hours of material across multiple electives. So, you know, you can also pair one and by one in basic, the curriculum with our free public roundtables. That's where we do the mentoring you can come and discuss your project specific issues. Those would be my advice and guidance on how to self, how to focus on self-study as you're building your tech startup. Tech startup only, by the way. I haven't answered this question more broadly. <clears throat> tech startup is what we focus on. The next question is why is Peter Thiel not a fan of the lean startup methodology? Most likely, I'm guessing, I'm not Peter Thiel, I don't know him personally, so I'm just guessing. Most likely because of its short-term oriented view. The weakest point of the methodology, in my opinion, is the excessive emphasis on quick validation and pivot. If you don't have internal conviction, you look for instant validation. But often, especially if you have strong vision and internal conviction about market, a product, a direction in which you want to take your industry, 
you won't be able to score a quick validation. You would need, you need to give yourself and the market some runway. The lean startup principle that Eric Ries espouses ignores this whole line of thought. The other thing to think about is if you have, let's say, you're working on an enterprise, enterprise technology product idea where you have to sell to high level enterprise decision makers, just getting a meeting is going to take you three months. Um, you can't pivot out of an idea just because you can't get the meeting with the enterprise decision makers because you will not be able to even know whether your idea validates or not until you go sit down with these people. So these are the realities of um, you know, the weaknesses of the model. The model is good in principle, it's good, but, but you have to also kind of take into consideration that it is not like a catch-all. It's, it's become this catch-all phrase, but it's not a catch-all methodology. Uh, the next question is, where can I get access to Harvard Business School case studies on entrepreneurs? Well, yeah, I have to take you back to the same answer that I just gave you about self-learning. Harvard Business School publishes case studies to teach its students and sells the case studies to people who are willing to pay big bucks for it. So you can't really access Harvard Business School case studies for free. You can, however, go to our blog, the 1 million by 1 million blog and read the Entrepreneur Journey series. These are case studies and there are over a thousand of those. You can go read them and they're free. There are also 12 books that we have published on the basis of, uh, you know, on this body of work. That's, you know, for a small fee, they're all available on Amazon. And then you could do the 1 million by 1 million basic program that I was talking about earlier. That is a case study based online curriculum. You could also um, use that and that's just $99 a month. The next question is what is the number one reason why tech startups fail? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna give you 10 reasons, not one. Over 600,000 companies go out of business every year in the US alone. Infant entrepreneur mortality is a massive problem. Here are 10 avoidable mistakes first time entrepreneurs make repeatedly. They define success equals funding. They do not know the essential techniques of bootstrapping. They don't understand positioning. They spend money on unimportant things and run out of cash. They hire too many people too soon without validating. They start building a product without validating. They chase investors instead of customers. They network randomly without focus. They talk to investors too soon and blow important cartridges. cartridges. They don't focus on the business model and path to monetization. All these, these 10 points are, you know, one or more reasons why startups fail. Avoid them at all costs. You cannot succeed without first surviving. I've never met an entrepreneur who has built a billion dollar business without first building a million dollar one. Do your homework, use the self-assessment tool that I talked about to calibrate your business the way investors would. Whether or not you're raising money, think of yourself as an investor in your own business and test yourself against these issues. Do not waste money getting fancy office space and furniture. Entrepreneurship equals customers, revenues and profits. Financing is optional, exit is optional. Success is a sustainable, profitable business that meets customer needs. Next question is, why do founders get fired? There are lots of reasons founders get fired. Number one is non-performance. 
If a founder takes investor money and then fails to deliver on the KPIs quarter after quarter, that would be a legitimate reason for getting fired. So non-performance is number one. The second reason is politics and personality. Often founders accept to bring in a CEO and then there ensues personality clashes, power struggles and related politics. I've experienced this myself and I've written about it extensively. You can, if you're interested, go read this article that I wrote, if I were 22, I was fired from my own company. I was on LinkedIn. It was an article that LinkedIn was doing as, as part of a series and they asked us influencers to write about it, if I were 22. Um, I was fired uh, from my own company, so I know this very well. Um, the third point is disagreement on strategy. Founders and boards may not agree on strategy, and that could result in a leadership switch. There is one other point that I should make before I conclude discussion on this subject, and that is <laughs> you cannot get fired unless you have outside investors who are controlling your destiny. If you're bootstrapping a company and you're the CEO, no one can fire you. All right, last question for today. How can I get feedback from you on my venture? Very easy. One Million by One Million offers free online mentoring roundtable for entrepreneurs looking to discuss positioning, financing, and all other aspects of building a startup. Up to five entrepreneurs who registered to pitch will be able to present their businesses. They will gain straightforward feedback, advice on next steps and answers to questions from me directly and possibly my frequent guests who are CEOs and VCs on the show. You can register to attend, listen, uh, learn, join in the conversations via live chat, all of you who will register will receive the recording by email the next day. So this for this, you have to go to the website, go to the free public roundtables section, and that's where um, the registration links are, the schedule and the registration link, everything is there. Those who registered to pitch will receive instructions on the preparation required, including a roundtable pitch slides pitch template. We also recommend using the 1M by 1M self-assessment tool to prepare to pitch. Several entrepreneurs interested in pitching have first expanded their knowledge of the essential components of building a startup by joining our monthly 1M by 1M basic program and going through the 1 million by 1 million curriculum. By pitching after learning the curriculum, entrepreneurs get more, much more takeaway value from their interactions with me during the public roundtables. Please note, we work exclusively with IT and IT-enabled services businesses, and these roundtables are public forums. The recordings of all sessions are shared online, and entrepreneurs who pitch will receive media exposure through the roundtable recap column, which is posted on our blog and elsewhere. Members only private roundtables are offered as part of the 1M by 1M premium program. Those recordings are not published externally. So if you have concerns about privacy, your better bet would be 1M by 1M premium and not um, 1M by 1M public roundtables. So that is all for today. Um, I'm very happy to stick around and answer questions in the in the comments section. So if you're listening today and uh, if you have questions, uh, go ahead and type those questions into the public comment section of this this uh, broadcast and I will I will come and talk to you in the public chat in a moment as soon as we are joined this session. It's very hard for me to manage both. Uh, you know, talk to you on video, on camera, and also type answers to your questions in parallel. But I will do that as soon as we finish uh, adjourn the session. So um, I hope I'll, to, I'll see some of you at the public roundtables this week. The next public roundtable is on Thursday morning, this Thursday morning. Um, it's 8 a.m. Pacific on February 27th. 
and um, I hope to see you there. Thank you for coming today and look forward to seeing you again here next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific. Bye, everybody.